I would like to, to comment that open science has been the driver in medicine back since the Middle Ages. So now we have, so to say, technological ways where we before made those community we heard in the previous uh, presentation, you were walking from university to university. So the team issue is really important here. I would also try to remind us that yesterday morning, one colleague of mine died, Professor Hans Rusling at Karolinska Institute. And I uh, t uh, say his name because he really was fashion about using data and illustrating in medical field how the pattern has changed over the globe, how the number of born children, healthy uh, children, ha the number has increased and they are more healthy and the world are coming closer to each other. So he was a, a pioneer. So look into gapminder.org, O-R-G. I will give some facts that I hope inspire you to use Science Gateway concept. So the uh, first here shows that there are very few publications uh, in cardiovascular fields. It's a huge and an increasing important field in Africa that is through collaboration. Uh, so most <coughs> of the collaborations or the publication are from international co collaboration. And then there are single uh, type of paper. There is need to increase these possibilities. And I think exactly uh, this is what Science Gateway is doing. Another <coughs> field where we lack data is the area of epidemiology is important for public health. And the red spots in Latin America, Africa, uh, and also in Asia, but in particularly in Africa, shows the, the infrequency, I would say, of publication in epidemiology and data from a specific country. So this has initiated 43 demographic surveillance sites where you follow deaths, births, movements, and health data. And data are published from these sites now. And I think Science Gateway give you an opportunity to collaborate between those white spot. And in fact, for example, the number of publication in epidemiology in Tanzania down here is 140 of how it is in Sweden. So here you have a challenge. The third one is close to my mind, and that is how we use medicines. So there is a recent report that is recommended, essential medicine for universal health coverage. And medicine and rational use of medicine is important because it takes 30 to 60% of healthcare costs in most African countries. And there are cheap, there are effective drugs, but some of them, so-called generic drugs, are very expensive. So look here. Here is high-income countries, the population, and how much the use of the total amount spent on drugs. I mean, it's four or five times more than the population. So this is not a feasible way. So this commission suggests that the, you should pay for a basket of essential medicine for the population, make essential medicine affordable, assure quality and safety of medicines, promote quality use, and develop missing essential med medicines. And medical use of medicine, production of medicine, relies on data. So these make essential medicine affordable. You need open data. You need to know the quality of different brands. You need to know how they, what they cost, and thereby you create, so to say, a market 
assure quality or safety of medicine, you need to testify that the product is, use, is usable. To promote quality use, that needs education, access to information, and develop new medicines. That, of course, needs uh, access to data and knowledge, and this is a combination of advanced basic data and, uh, and then data that is applied. Uh, so we could summarize that the needs for, for open sci science uh, in, in medicine in Africa it is exemplified that there are few bioscientists and few medical practitioners in various fields. They need to get together. And you need to create a way of collaborating, exactly what uh, Science Gateway is about. Another is affordable treatment, open and, and techniques, and trusted information. And I have exemplified that you, if publish data on the cost and quality of medicines, you create a transparent markets. And this could be done within community or practice, a group of people working together. Lack of money, that could be simplified, shared use of application, and then develop a competitive market using open data. So I will give um, uh, two examples what we have worked on within uh, Science Gateway related to medicine and pharmacology, and that is the African uh, Pharmacological uh, Science Gateway, and it's also a community health portal. So what we have done, and that can be a model, is to specify the group, specify needed resources, and sub up a, a collaborative electronic um, a platform. So this um, uh, African Pharmacological Science Gateway is within the Science Gateway, and it's accessible, as uh, uh, Roberto mentioned. And of all countries, this is coordinated by Zimbabwe, that has a very advanced uh, lab in basic uh, scientists, but there are institutions across uh, Africa uh, participating. So the African Pharmacological Science Gateway, that's exactly to make use of friend you have close by that is a little bit distant away, to strengthen the collaborative ties within Africa. And this really promotes and implement African medical science collaboration that I think is recognized by all parties in leading medical circuits is improved being is important uh, for uh, African development. And one field where it's important is for clinical trials and clinical drug studies. So therefore, we have different parts of this pharmacological size way. So it's an overview, and then there are different type of tools in various areas. So we have concentrating on genomics, that's basic data that requires use computer uh, capacity, bioanalysis, you measure a number of uh, small compounds in the body, it can be drugs, and you have another area that you calculate the disposition, how these drugs are taken care about, and then you have clinical trial where you test the medicine in patients. And then you have a need of a, a discussion space. So it's lo look like this, and this is the different area. And you can then access various advanced tools for genomic analysis. That is far distant away in Africa and uh, in Europe or elsewhere. Here they are specified. So another application is to make available uh, data, guidelines, data about drugs, and educational material in something called community health portal. That is for, or, or sorry, this, this I would add that um, before coming into the community health portal, that 
in order to develop this pharmacological science gateway, we have identified through a, a questionnaire that is by Dr. Olajinko Gonleje from Lago State University, and we had 118 respondents across Africa that many want uh, various tools where you can follow how drugs are used. It's epidemiological types of tools. And some of those responding also wanted help to use various type of machines. So this illustrates that you can further develop a specific <coughs> science gateway, as uh, this example is in pharmacology. And you can use, as we heard, this discussion forum to uh, uh, clarify the needs. Now, the community health portal, that is to provide uh, guidelines to rural African health centers that have limited except, uh, access to scientific literature, and they should be able to use examples from other um, colleagues, and they should also know what drugs are available. So this support health worker and patient in rural Africa got a different application under one hood. I think the challenge here is really the contents. So it's not the technique. So you need to get support that this is an important development uh, uh, road. So it's looked like this. And uh, I will then conclude that we have, uh, I have shown African pharmacological science gateway and how we update they. Uh, and I also will tell that the community health portal that has been mostly driven outside our project, but that has been accepted as an important way forward by Ministry of Health in Tanzania. So I would, before finishing, pinpoint that in order to really make use of this excellent concept and so to say build a bridge from open science as we know it back in the Middle Ages and as you know it in Africa when huge national university was funded in, in Kenya, Tanzania, um, Ghana, Nigeria, etc. They were really driver of this uh, uh, mentality. You need to have resources to initiate, develop, main, maintain community of practices and knowledge management. And I think this is not well res recognized. So the data management and to take care of the contents need people. So I think one needs to, in future, I would suggest that one focus on this issue. And that could be a pan-African initiative. But I have been working with uh, African colleagues back since the end of the 70s, and I have never seen so much happening as is happening now. And this tool, uh, we have heard example what can be done. And one aspect is uh, by the previous uh, presentation of uh, Professor Benjamin. I think that sets a new standard that you have magnetic resonance, open science, because you, instead of having the software patented in the machine, as I understand it, have it outside, and it could be checked, and it will be developed much further. So I think you have an affordability aspect of this that I tried to illustrate um, in the area of uh, clinical pharmacology. I am a professor in clinical pharmacology in Karolinska Institute, and I will be here the full day, and I am happy to discuss with you. Thank you very much.